Is the 2020 Toyota Corolla Hybrid a good choice for those of you who don't want to go full on electric? Well, if you want to know whether or not hybrids are a good option for those who want good range while also being able to operate their vehicle by battery, then keep watching. I'm going to take you with me on my test drive around town as well as on a 300 mile road trip from Atlanta to Savannah and Tybee Island to see how the 2020 Toyota Corolla Hybrid stacks up in everyday situations as well as on a road trip. Welcome back to my sustainable travel, lifestyle, and smart tech YouTube channel where I show you how to live an adventurously green life. So I once read in Forbes that the Toyota Corolla was the best selling car in the world. And today I'm gonna try and see why. Those of you who follow my adventures know that I'm a fangirl for electric cars and any lifestyle change in general that helps you reduce your impact on the environment. Now I have a lot of people who are interested in electric cars but aren't quite ready to make that leap from gas to full-on electric, one of the popular reasons being range anxiety. So in this video, I have something special for you guys. I'm test driving the 2020 Toyota Corolla Hybrid, which also happens to be the first ever Corolla Hybrid. First things first, what is the difference between a fully electric car, AKA an EV, a hybrid car, AKA an HEV, and a plug-in hybrid, AKA a PHEV? So an all electric car is strictly battery powered and has no engine, whereas hybrid cars run off both gasoline and battery. A conventional hybrid has a moderately sized battery that is charged through regenerative braking and by the internal combustion engine. And a plug-in hybrid, on the other hand, has a larger battery but in order to charge it, you have to plug it in. And I've experienced driving all three of these, an electric car that I own, a plug-in hybrid that I test drove on a road trip a few years ago, and now a conventional hybrid car that I test drove on both a road trip and locally around my own town, the 2020 Toyota Corolla Hybrid. Here's what I learned while driving it. How does the battery charge? The cool thing about HEVs is you don't have to plug it in in order to charge the battery. So this is actually the first road trip that I've taken in a long time since going electric where I didn't have to pull over to charge my car because with the 2020 Toyota Corolla Hybrid, the battery charges without having to be plugged in thanks to its regenerative braking system. In a gas-powered car, every time you hit the brakes, you waste energy. In a hybrid car, the opposite happens. Each time you step on the brake pedal of an electric or hybrid vehicle, their regenerative brakes put the vehicle's electric motor into reverse mode, causing it to run backwards, thus slowing the car's wheels. While running backwards, electricity is produced and then fed into the car's batteries. How far can you drive? With an estimated 52 combined miles per gallon, the highest ever for Corolla, you can go a lot farther while driving. For this test drive, I drove around town first and then from Atlanta to Tybee Island to do a beach cleanup. Even though this conventional hybrid car gets more mileage driving around the city than on the highway, it's worth mentioning that it can still be effective in longer distance drives. During my 300 mile road trip, it felt like the needle barely moved. It has EPA ratings of 53 miles per gallon city and 52 miles per gallon highway. So while it was fuel efficient during the highway drive to Tybee Island, I got even more mileage while I was driving around Tybee Island for my beach cleanup. Because each time I let off the gas and braked, it generated quite a bit of power. This regenerative braking is what allows hybrid vehicles to optimize their distance more than gas engines. So how is it greener than gas? Hybrids have lower emissions and release fewer pollutants than gas-powered cars. 
The Toyota Corolla Hybrid in particular happens to be Toyota's most fuel-efficient sedan in the U.S. market. The more fuel-efficient a car, the cleaner the air will be. The tailpipe emissions coming from fuel-efficient cars are lesser than the cars that are not fuel-efficient. As a result, the damage done to the atmosphere is considerably less. Also, hybrids have fuel-saving auto-stop features that shut off the car's gas engine when the vehicle is stopped. So let's talk money. How exactly does it save you money? Well, going green will save you green. Choosing a more sustainable lifestyle is not only good for the environment, but great for your wallets too, y'all. In this case, less gas usage equals less gas money. Use an online tool to calculate gas savings when you switch from a gas guzzler to a fuel-efficient car. Also, many state and local governments reward alternative fuel drivers with tax credits, rebates, and incentives. Although fully electric and plug-in hybrids get the highest rewards, conventional hybrids still do get some incentives depending on the state. So who is this car good for? It's good for anybody who's interested in electric cars, but they don't want to go all the way electric and they just want to dabble in it. Toyota is making hybrid technology mainstream and I am so down with that because every little bit helps. It's also good for anybody who wants a hybrid car without having to sacrifice style because let's face it, not all electric cars or hybrid cars are very sexy, but the 2020 Toyota Corolla Hybrid has a modern sporty look to it that I think a lot of people can appreciate. And it's also really good for commuters and people who plan to primarily use the car for commuting or driving relatively short distances because the battery charges whenever the car slows down and stops. So stop and go traffic drivers will benefit tremendously from this car. So that's all I got for today. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a huge thumbs up and subscribe for more sustainable travel, lifestyle, and smart tech videos headed your way. Until next week, keep on living an adventurously green life.